Hello everybody, welcome to my video about demand and elasticity. Uh, this video is going to be appropriate for probably for an intermediate micro course with no calculus. Uh, we do do a little bit of light calculus. I'll, I'll include some of the notations, so maybe intermediate with calculus, it just wouldn't be the most challenging question. Uh, and I'm making it as a review for my IO course as well. So. Anything micro it should be fair game. So let's get started. Let's say that we have a demand function for good I. Quantity of good I is equal to two times the income minus one half times the price of good I minus three times the price of good J. So right off the bat, we've got ourselves a good uh, two goods, their prices are factors, as well as consumer income. Now, what you'll often see with some of these questions is that Y is already given, and maybe PJ is already given. And so this function collapses to just, let's see, 100 minus half pi minus 3 times 10 equals 70 minus 1 half pi. So you'll often see it looking just like this. And so that is a curve that we can actually graph. Uh, I could invert it. I'm not going to bother right now. Uh, the maximum quantity is 70. And that it's going to go up like that to 140. I'm not going to teach you how to graph it. You'll have to figure that part out on your own. But let's just say there's your demand curve. And we know that anytime you pick some point along the curve via plugging in a price or plugging in a quantity, as price changes, if we go from this high price and this quantity and we lower the price, we will shift along the curve to some higher quantity. And so price changes for the same good lead to sh changes in the quantity demanded. Uh, something to point out though is now that we have these other variables, we have something concrete in here, something we know could change demand. What if income goes from 50 to 60. Well, now our demand curve changes. It's 120 minus half PI minus 30. So 90 minus half PI. That has the effect of shifting demand outwards. Or what if instead, let's get rid of, ignore that stuff for a minute, what if instead we change the price of good J and it goes from 10 to 20? Uh, so that would make it go QI is equal to 100 minus half PI minus 3 times 20. So, sorry, so minus 60, 40 minus half PI. In which case I go 40 and I would go 80. And what we're going to see is if we change either of these variables, the whole curve will move. And so when we change one of those, income or a relative good or any other variables we might include, the whole curve that we normally consider is going to shift. Uh, in this case, like that. But if we want to change this price, the price of the good we're actually interested in, that's just a shift along the curve. So when we change the price, we shift along the curve. If we change one of these other red variables, the whole demand curve itself will move. And so that's sort of where a lot of the grumpy distinctions that always kill you on the multiple choice questions in your intro course come from. Uh, but that's not where I want to spend all of our time today. 
I think we're here mostly to talk, dang it, I missed. We're here mostly to talk about elasticities. So, let's get to it. I want to calculate three kinds of elasticity. I want to calculate the price elasticity of demand, which I'll just say E P I. I want, I guess I'll label it price elasticity. And then I'll also want to do a cross price elasticity and I'll want to do an income elasticity. Now I'm going to assume you've read your book and you know how to interpret these. I just want to do the math to help you out a little bit. Our cross price elasticity, we can define or we solve as, ooh, I'm, I should probably actually do it for a certain point, huh? I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's say that the price of good I is 20. Uh, let's see, so the quantity demanded with Y50, PI20, PJ10 is 70 minus 1 half times 20 is 60. So I'm interested in calculating my price elasticity, my cross price elasticity, and my income elasticity at that point. So let's do it. Price elasticity, dqi over dpi times pi over qi. Now, don't get freaked out by this notation. There's no calculus in this class. I'm just going to tell you, anytime you see that on a straight line, all you have to do is just take the slope. So the slope of our demand function, dqi means we're taking the slope of q, dpi means we're taking it with respect to pi. Well, the slope of q with respect to pi is minus a half. So, this is minus one half times pi, which is 20, over qi, which is 60, equals minus one over six, which is inelastic. Uh, our cross price elasticity is very similar in how we solve for it. But instead of being interested in the price of good I, we're interested in the price of good J. So cross price elasticity might look something like this. DQI over DPJ times PJ over QI. And again, don't be afraid of this. I'm looking for the slope of the demand curve with respect to PJ. Well, that's here. It's just the number attached to that letter. So this is minus three times, let's see, PJ is 10, and Q is 60. This is minus a half, which is inelastic again. Now our last one we're gonna do right now Let's do an income elasticity. And with respect to income, you can probably already guess it. Change in Q, DI, oh, sorry, DQ, DY times Y over Q. And you guessed it. Where's the slope? Change in QI with respect to Y, there's the slope attached to Y. So it's 2 times, let's see, Y is 50, Q is 60, so let's see, 100 over 60 is 5 over 3, which is elastic. When you're calculating these different elasticities, the idea is the same for each. How fast is Q changing with respect to one of your variables? And then multiply it by a ratio of that variable and Q. 
whether it's dqi d sorry dqi dpi times pi over qi with our price elasticity dq dpj times pj over q with our cross price or dq dy times y over q always the same sort of feel to it uh, as far as us shortcutting the calculus i'm sticking with linear demand curves which means you can just trust me this is dq dy this is dq dpi and this is dq dpj just the number attached to your variable plug it into those equations you're good to go so we have solved for all three kinds of elasticity at this point if we were to choose some other point along the curve they would all change because even if the slope didn't change our ratios our pi's over qi's our pj's over qi's our y's over qi's those would all change as we shift along the curve uh, but this video is long enough already so thanks for watching hope it was worth your time if not, too bad, because you already wasted your time. Good luck, you guys.